I know I'm preaching to the choir by saying this, but MAGA world really is one big cult where loyalty and perceived loyalty to Trump are more important than literally everything else, because that loyalty is what determines your status and where you are in the hierarchy of this cult. Now, I say all this to say Marjorie Taylor Greene got outraged because Trump made a joke about her in a closed door GOP conference. And because a reporter dared to report on it, She's now mad at this reporter and is accusing this reporter of being biased. Now, this only matters in a world where you have a political figure as a cult because she doesn't want anyone to think that, you know, she's not on good terms with Donald Trump or not all in on the cult or something. I don't like I don't know what goes through her brain, but to get mad about this is so bizarre and what's even more bizarre is how mad she got about this so let's get to what olivia beavers of politico reported via twitter quote trump pointing at the speaker mike johnson hello marjorie are you being nice to him room erupted per source in room she adds representative marjorie taylor green when asked about this said i said eh and he said okay you be nice to him but he also said he's loyal to me per jordan carney oh no he really roasted the shit out of her it's just crazy to me because that is a lighthearted jab at most where Trump is acknowledging the fact that she's been unreasonably harsh towards Speaker Mike Johnson. Now, don't get me wrong. I appreciate the fact that she's doing it and wish that she was more mean to him because he certainly deserves it. But what doesn't make sense is that she's this mean to him when they're on the same fucking side, right? She refuses to acknowledge that he has to work with Democrats on some things since Republicans have a one vote majority in the House. But because this maybe, I guess, gives the perception that her relationship with Trump is kind of strained. She just couldn't let that stand. And she had to put Olivia Beavers on blast because she reported this writing on Twitter. Nothing's worse than a reporter that only reports half the story. She left off all the nice compliments President Trump said about me to our conference. This is so stupid and petty. President Trump is right. I'm loyal and unapologetically support him everywhere and all the time. And I am capable. That's why I'll be nice to Johnson as long as he's nice to my favorite president and that means speaker johnson better use the full weight of his office to stop the politically weaponized government and pass our republican agenda not biden's agenda i mean imagine just taking the command of someone like you're a fucking dog will you be nice to him marjorie okay i will be nice to him daddy thank you i mean it's just it's so embarrassing i don't think i was that obedient as a child my dog isn't that obedient but here, and he's a good boy, by the way, but I mean, come on, there are limits, right? But yet here she is just like letting Donald Trump shit down her throat. And she's like, this is fine. I actually think it tastes good. Okay, you're not fooling anybody. But I mean, I guess the reporter is biased because she didn't report on the compliments that Trump gave her. Be serious, Marjorie. Do you really think that's a story? Flip it for a moment. If this were a Democrat and Biden made a joke about them, just the lighthearted jab, would you care about the compliments that he also paid them? Of course not. Nobody would. It's only a story because he's maybe kind of poking fun at you. But this isn't even a big fucking deal. But I love how she made it a big deal and created the Streisand effect around it. And I say this because if you compare the views to Marjorie Taylor Greene's quote tweet and Olivia Beaver's original tweet, guess which one got more likes and uh, engagement overall? It was Marjorie's. Nobody saw Olivia Beavers until Marjorie Green made a big deal about it. So she she ended up signal boosting a story that's not really that interesting, all to make sure that everybody in the country knows that everything is perfectly fine between her and Daddy Trump. It's just so goddamn embarrassing. And I honestly can't imagine her admitting that she disagrees with Trump on anything, regardless of how insignificant it is. Like if they both got ice cream together and she's like, I think that chocolate is the best flavor. And Trump is like, oh, well, actually, I think that vanilla is the best flavor. She'd be like, oh, you know what? Actually, I think that you're right. Vanilla really is the best flavor. Because it goes back to that cult mentality of MAGA world. You can't be part of this cult if you don't pay absolute fealty to its leader. 
And that's really dangerous because we're not just talking about some random person or some celebrity. We're talking about the former president and potentially the future president of the United States. So this, this is dangerous because it establishes this idea that the leader of this cult can do no wrong no matter how extreme he becomes. So if he says that the election was stolen, well, everybody has to accept it as the gospel. If he says that he wants to be a dictator for a day, well, we have to pretend like that's perfectly fine and normal, even though we'd freak out if a Democrat said it, rightfully so, by the way. You know, if he says that he uh, wants to execute people, well, we have to assume that they must deserve it. And I say that because there's a report about him saying that there are people that he thinks should be executed. And then there's just crickets from MAGA world because, of course, daddy said it, so it's A-OK. -okay. New Republic reports, quote, Former Trump communications director Alyssa Griffin told Mediaite on Friday that Trump called to execute a staffer who leaked a story about Trump hiding in a bunker during the 2020 Black Lives Matter protests in response to the police murder of George Floyd. He straight up said the staffer who leaked should be executed, Griffin noted, adding that there were other incidents where he talked about executing people. Griffin went on to call out former Attorney General Bill Barr, whom she claimed knew of the whole thing when asked about the report in a CNN interview in April. Quote, Bill Barr kind of danced around it and said, I don't recall that specific instance, but there were others where he talked about executing people. During the CNN interview, Barr did in fact seem to justify the remarks claiming Trump would lose his temper and blow off steam by calling to execute people. Very normal. Creepily, Barr noted that eventually Trump could be talked down from his desire to see people he got upset with put to death, saying, I doubt he would have actually carried it out oh okay well i guess it's fine if he could be talked out of wanting to execute people very cool you know hopefully there's going to be somebody there to talk him down if he i don't know wants to start a new war or use nuclear weapons if he gets elected again but i guess we'll just have to wait and see but i mean ask yourself could you imagine any trump loyalist saying something like you know what trump i support you but i do disagree mildly on this one issue of course not. None of them would say that because towing the line 100% of the time is a matter of life and death for their political careers. So if Trump told them to start saying that the earth is flat, they would say that like that. If Trump told them to start telling people that he has superpowers, they would say that. You know they would. They would parrot it like the NPCs that they are because he is the cult leader and what he says goes. But when it comes to politicians, I think that there's two kinds of Trump cultists. There's the true believers and then there's the opportunists. The true believers, like Steve Bannon, for example, actually believe in Trump's authoritarian project. For example, he's already floated some of the names Trump plans to execute if he's elected again, including Lisa Monaco, Merrick Garland, Jack Smith, and senior members of the DOJ. In other words, even though we've been saying that prosecuting your political opponents is bad, we're going to go ahead and do that since uh, Biden did it or something. Never mind the fact that Democrats like Henry Cuellar and Bob Menendez and even Biden's own son are being prosecuted under the same DOJ. They're still pretending like Biden is the one behind all of this, and he's the one deliberately targeting his political rivals, and they're lying. They're saying this because they think that that gives them a justification to do it themselves. But I do want to talk about the opportunists in MAGA world because Steve Bannon, that's a true believer. But there are opportunists who are part of the cult for purposes of political expediency, but they're not true believers. I think the prime example of that is Tim Scott, who's saying what he thinks he needs to say to become Trump's VP. Now, we didn't talk about this clip a couple of weeks ago, but it is wild to me, and I do want to share it right now, because I think that this kind of demonstrates how disingenuous people are willing to be, because supporting Trump, that's what gets you ahead. So watch what happens when he's asked multiple times if he would accept the results of the 2024 election. Well, Senator, will you commit to accepting the election results of 2024? Bottom line. Well, at the end of the day, the 47th president of the United States will be President Donald Trump. And I'm excited to give back to low inflation, low unemployment. Wait, wait, and Senator, high yes or no? Yes or no? Will you accept the election results of 2024 no matter who wins? That is my statement. But but is it just yes or no? Will you accept the election results of 2024? I I look forward to President Trump being the 47th president. Kristen, you could ask him multiple but times. But Senator, just a yes or no the answer. The so the American people, the, the American people will make the decision. But I don't hear you committing for President Trump. That's that clear. I don't hear you committing not, to the election see, results. Here, here's the chill. Will you commit this, to accepting is, the election this is results? Why so many. This is why so many Americans believe that NBC is an extension of the Democrat Party. At the end of the day, 
I've said what I've said, and I know that the American people, their voices will be heard, and I believe that President Trump will be our next president. It's that simple. But, Senators, you know, the hallmark of our democracy is that both candidates agree to a peaceful transfer of power. So I'm asking you as a potential VP nominee, will you accept to commit to the election results in this election cycle, no matter who wins? Just simply yes or no. I expect... I expect President Trump to win the next election. Listen, I'm not going to ask you, answer your hypothetical question when, in fact, I believe the American people are speaking today on the results of the election. And if, the, if, it, continue, if it continues for the next six months, we find ourselves in a great position where we get back to another century of American prosperity. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that. It's amazing what people will do, how far they'd go to humiliate themselves just for a chance at power. That man voted to certify the election in 2021, but all of a sudden, he won't say if he'd accept the results in 2024, because if he were to say, yes, I would certify the election like Mike Pence did, he knows Trump wouldn't make him his VP. But we all know he knows that Trump is full of shit. So I don't think he's a true believer. But, you know, opportunism from politicians isn't necessarily surprising because none of them have spines. But what's so dangerous about this moment is the fact that Trump's cult has explicitly rejected democracy, right? So you have the politicians and then you have the cult followers, like the regular rank and file Republican voters. They don't believe Trump lost the last election and they won't believe it if he lost this election. But it gets so much worse than that because if Trump does win the next election, then they're already being primed to believe that Trump can't possibly destroy democracy because they're now being told to believe that America was never a democracy to begin with. Now, this isn't some nuanced critique where it's like, okay, well, we weren't a true democracy until slavery was abolished and women had suffrage and, and so on and so forth. No, they're just saying we're not a democracy, period. So listen to what they say and what they parrot in particular when asked about democracy by CNN's Donny O'Sullivan. America's not a democracy, it's a republic. Like it's not a democracy. Okay, democracy is actually not as good as you think it is. But for centuries, America has celebrated its democracy. Democracy is worth dying for. Democracy remains the definition of political legitimacy. But some Republicans and pro-Trump media are pushing the idea that America is not a democracy. The United States of America is not a democracy. We are a constitutional republic. The United States of America is not a democracy. You don't want to be in a democracy. We are not a democracy. We are a republic. Is America a democracy? America is a democracy. It was founded as a democracy. I've heard a lot of conspiracy theories. I hear a lot of things <laughs> out on the road. But to hear Americans People who would describe themselves as patriots say that America is not a democracy. That stopped me in my tracks. You are hearing people say America is not a democracy because there are people around Trump who want them to be saying that, who've been planting that narrative. Is America a democracy? Yes. No. I don't, I think well, not we're right a now, republic. But we're, yeah, we're a republic. What's the difference? I feel like democracy let me think this through. That it's government control. I don't see freedom in democracy. I see freedom in the republic. Honestly, the word democracy and the word republic have often been used interchangeably. There isn't a meaningful difference between them. Right. And the reason why this is the case is because democracy is an umbrella term. There are many types of democracies. There is direct democracies, democratic republics, parliamentary democracies, presidential democracies. There's polyarchy, which is sort of an ideal set of standards for democracies. But at the end of the day, it's the same fucking thing. You know, saying we're not a democracy, we're a republic is like saying this isn't a watch. It's an Apple watch. OK, well, sure, it's an Apple watch, yes, but to say that it's not a watch is wrong because it's a type of watch. And by trying to be overly technical and specific, you end up just sounding like a dumbass. But the point is, the cult members are all repeating this line about America not being a democracy because cult leaders are telling them that that's what they have to think. So in conclusion, the MAGA cult is about more than fealty to Trump, even though that is important. It's also about having the same mentality, like a sort of political hive mind akin to the aliens in the claw machine and toy story, albeit less smart. And that's because it's a fucking cult. I think most people can see 
This is a cult for all intents and purposes. Some of them are going to destroy themselves and possibly the country in service of this cult. And others are one day going to snap out of it and realize how foolish they were being as participants in this cult. And that is one thing to keep in mind, because whenever I see how stupid American politics have gotten, you just have to remember this is only one moment in time and things will change, hopefully for the better. They could get dumber and worse. But, you know, for the most part, the Trump era is just that. It's an era. Trump is not a deity or a demigod. He's just a guy. And one day he's going to be gone. And at some point, the spell that he has over people will break. The only question is how much havoc will he have wreaked by the time the Trump era ends? And, you know, we'll just have to wait and see to find out, I guess. Vagina. 